This is Braylon. Press you. He goes to Gastonia's Brookside Elementary, and he has autism. One day last September, Braylon had a meltdown. A school administrator claimed he was a threat to himself and others. She restrained him using the children's control position taught by the Crisis Prevention Institute, or CPI. It's only supposed to be used as a last resort, and when done properly, an educator can control a child with minimal injury and pain. I understand that she had to restrain him, but the way she restrained him was completely inappropriate. When Braylon's mom, Haley Carver, arrived at school... Well, he had bruising on his upper arm as well as redness on his neck. The redness on his neck and the redness on his arm turned into bruises. You could see very clear fingerprints on his upper arm and bruising around his neck, almost like his skin was pinched. Gaston County Schools says two days later, the administrator who restrained Braylon was suspended with pay for a week. It's not allowed to disclose the reason for that suspension. Local attorney Keith Howard represents families whose children suffered serious injuries while being restrained at school. It seems like there's a, an epidemic when it comes to unlawfully restraining kids. Disability Rights North Carolina says across the state, children who are restrained suffered rug burns, bruises looking like fingerprints, scratches, and serious psychological trauma. Training is supposed to prevent educators from restraining children in the first place. But the State Department of Instruction does not require any physical restraint training. Carrie Minnick runs Gaston County Schools' Department for Exceptional Children. She says the county goes above and beyond on state requirements. Gaston County Schools feels very good about the program that we have in place to provide the training for our teachers. At the beginning of every school year, the county must give staff an overview of the state law which outlines when it's appropriate to restrain a child. Special education teachers must then take CPI training, which includes a two to four hour online course and six hours of in-person training. They then take a yearly refresher course lasting four to six hours. The county says certified trainers follow up with schools and encourage them to practice these techniques but it's not required. The U.S. Department of Education says training should be conducted regularly and frequently, like a fire drill, at least twice every school year. County records show the administrator who restrained Braylon received 8 to 10 hours of training in October 2018, nearly a year before this incident. Carver fears her son suffered serious mental trauma, and she says he still gets anxious whenever he sees that educator. I just wanted justice for him because, I mean, he's terrified. He's terrified to go back to school. It was almost traumatizing for him. So how often are children restrained in your child's school district? You can find out online at WCNC.com. Brandon Goldner, WCNC Charlotte.